Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a relatively short video that I'm making to respond to the fact that London, Ontario is getting GO trains. Uh, London, Ontario, or better known as Fake London, it seems in the YouTube urbanism space, is a medium-sized city in southwestern Ontario, and currently it's served by via train service to Toronto uh, via both the Lakeshore line that GO operates on and via GO's Kitchener line, albeit the Kitchener line service is fairly infrequent. Anyways, let's dive into it. Now it seems like GO service to London was something that we could have seen coming for a while. There's been test trains out on the tracks towards London for the past couple months, and there's just been general signs that Ontario is looking to expand transit service in southwestern Ontario, largely through kind of well-known government policy. It's also worth noting that GO has generally been expanding its services to far-flung locations. Of course, Niagara Falls service has slowly cranked up over the years, and service to Allendale Waterfront that's counter-peak direction is also something that we've seen in recent years. London is a bit of an outlier though, because the train trips are going to take four hours in one direction, which is a long time. Current train trips on Via are about two hours, and driving is probably going to be around three hours when you factor in traffic. Four hours for the train is pretty long, especially when you consider that Via trains over the same route cover the distance in three and a half hours. To be clear then, this isn't really a commuter service, because no one is commuting eight hours a day. And I think that that's part of what causes the confusion among people. You see, a lot of people seem to look at this like it's moving towards London, St. Mary's, and Stratford, which are the other cities on the line, as sort of like bedroom communities or commuter uh, potential bases for people working in Toronto. And I think that's just a strange and unsustainable way to approach this. It's just not going to make sense, even with decent rail, that's a lot faster than this, for people to be commuting so far if they're working in Toronto. If, if you're working in Toronto, you should live near Toronto, ideally as close to your job as possible, and that's the sort of sustainable way to commute. Not everyone can, but the majority of people can, and so we shouldn't really be designing mass transit to be for these sort of massive mega commutes. That said, the fact that the departures are sort of lined up as if uh, the train is meant to be used by commuters is going to raise some eyebrows, because it does sort of lead people to think that the implication is that people would be commuting into Toronto. Now, to be fair, I do see some utility in this service, though it's quite limited while there's only two trains a day and that trip is four hours long. For example, the first thing you have to consider when you're talking about these really long lines is that there may be some intermediate commuters. And I said the same thing about the Niagara Falls GO service that opened uh, a few years ago. I don't think very many people are gonna be commuting all the way to downtown Toronto, but you have to consider that some people might be commuting to intermediate destinations. That's particularly relevant for GO to London because a big destination is on the way to Toronto in Kitchener-Waterloo, which will be roughly two hours from London, and that is still a really long time. But for university students at the several universities in Waterloo, or for workers at the tech businesses and the like, it could be a pretty good option, especially since Ion Light Rail will eventually connect very nicely with the train station within Kitchener-Waterloo. And at the end of the day, some train service is better than no train service, and I think having just a few trips, and these are only weekday trips, is actually not the worst idea. It gets people in the mindset that GO trains will operate to these stations, but not in the mindset that it's a really great option for commuting at the moment. But in the future, there's a lot of potential for GO to increase service and improve speed so that it actually becomes a really compelling offering. Truth be told though, as I said before, this is never going to really be a commuter route. Even when we speed up the section from London to Kitchener-Waterloo, which is the sort of slowest section, and the really low speeds on the tracks between those two cities means that the train could probably apparently uh, have its travel time cut in half from two hours to about one hour if the tracks were you know, significantly improved. That's a pretty long trip in itself, and people are probably not looking to generally commute, you know, three to two and a half hours, which is what I would imagine a future version of this line looks like with the necessary upgrades, all the way to Toronto on a daily basis. And I think that part of the way we need to look at this is that GO is becoming more than a commuter railway, and I mean, I think we've seen this trend for some time. 
all day service is part of it, but it's not just all day service within the city centers, it's all day service over longer distances to places like Niagara Falls and Allendale Waterfront. Go is becoming sort of the southern or southwestern Ontario um, regional railway as in super region, as in Australian style regional railway. And I think that we have to start looking at it like that. The problem is that it doesn't seem like Go has fully understood that that's the role it's taking on. And it's sort of approaching it like a commuter railway would by making the trips happen, um, you know, early in the morning and late at night, which is awkward for people who want to do non-commute trips. I think the rolling stock is another thing that needs to be looked into. Go trains are actually not as uncomfortable as a lot of people suggest, in my personal opinion. But yeah, over four hour trips and over these sort of medium distance trips, I do think that you have to see Go trains adjust. They have to become more comfortable and they have to start accommodating a type of traveler that isn't a commuter. You know, this type of traveler doesn't necessarily only have a backpack with them. They might have a small suitcase, for example, or they might have a bike with them. And we need to accommodate those riders for a lot of these longer haul trips. So that could look like things like adding bike racks to some trains or doing what they do in Sydney and having sort of a, a sub fleet that is designed for the longer distance trips. That's similar enough to the city fleet that it can sort of interoperate with it, but that has amenities and car designs that are more suited for those long distance trips. Of course though, as I said, there's a lot of potential for the future. If you have those better trains, if you get the speed upgrades in, then you know people can make a day trip into Toronto from London. It's not gonna be an everyday trip and it probably shouldn't ever be, but it's going to be possible. You know, I could see people from London and St. Mary's and Stratford and Kitchener-Waterloo commuting to Pearson to get to a flight to, you know, who knows where, or going to Woodbine in the future, or going to all kinds of other destinations. The point is that by improving frequency, improving the service span, improving the speed, all of these options become possible. And that's sort of my long distance vision for the corridor. I'm gonna be doing another video on this soon, so stay tuned. But suffice to say, my overall opinion is that it's good to introduce this service. We shouldn't expect it to be some incredibly popular thing, but I think operating a handful of trains a day is a good approach to get people in the mindset that train service to these locations via Go is something that actually can happen and that we don't have to be stuck with via rail forever and that there's other options. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Oh, side note, train service starts October 18th and there'll probably be a video to come on that.